Hey guys, this is Riley from the Shooting the Shit podcast here to remind you of our sponsor, Cornelius and Sons. Head to Facebook.com if you're in the Illinois, greater Illinois area uh, for all your home construction needs uh, this winter. Um, this interview with Jason Knight will start in the middle of the interview or the beginning middle of the interview. Unfortunately, we had connection issues, um, so it cut out the first couple minutes of the show. No big deal. We'll jump right into the first topic. Uh, so hope you guys enjoy. Well, uh, let's jump right into it. Um, you know, recently I was on your social media page uh, and I saw an interesting video on there. It was a video of you and several other people uh, confronting somebody on the side of a road. So can you kind of just explain uh, the incident, what happened and the end result? Because uh, I believe the video was entitled that uh, you slapped somebody. Uh, it wasn't seen on camera, but it looked like it probably did happen. Oh, uh, what happened, man? Me and my big brother, we were going to get a full weather. And um, I want to say it was like Popperville, Mississippi or something. But anyways, we see this guy swerving all over the road. And my brother's like, this dude's drunk. He's pissing a wreck. And uh, it had been raining that day. So every now and then, like, you'd see him swerve off the road, big splash of water come up. Well, the next thing you know, my brother's like, I'm going to start recording. He's about to wreck. Sure enough, he wrecked. And uh, we get out. We're just going to record. And... You know, whenever we got to get out, the guy, he jumps in his truck. He, uh, he's still in his truck. He runs off into the edge of the woods. He starts turning back up. The next thing you know, you see this guy running down the hill to him. And we find out later the guy was an off-duty cop. Well, uh, we get down there. We're recording. And he starts talking trash to, to me and my brother, talking about how he beat us up and all that stuff. And then uh, he says something about... Uh, he pulls up his shirt and his belly says white pride. And he said something about, uh, men use the same color, you supposed to be my people. My brother's like, I wish a black dude was here so he could beat your ass. And then the guy was, he said something about, uh, I'll whoop both of y'all right now. And then my brother starts laughing. He said, what you think I want? And he walked up and he slapped the phone out of my brother's hand. But when he did that, my brother slapped him. My, my brother's a big old boy. And whenever he slapped him, he, he knocked him smooth out with a slap. But uh, well, well, I'm not sure who posted that up. Uh, I think it was one of my buddies. But it, it wasn't me who actually slapped him. It was my big brother. But it, it was some of the funniest stuff I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, so I would assume that that off-duty cop was the guy who uh, who put him in the uh, basically the half-Indian hold and, and uh, crossed his legs and went over the top of him and, and kind of restrained him, right? Yeah, he uh, I the the cop he was kind of he was pretty cool, but he, he the, the guy just had, kept acting like he was ready to leave the scene, like he was gonna go somewhere. So the cop was like, "No, you're not going anywhere," and slung him down and held him to the you know the the cops that were on duty got there. Yeah, and then that was funny. The last thing uh, I'll touch on this one is funny that uh, he he said that you you know you're my white dudes or whatever that uh, you you should be on my side. It's just like, dude, I'm my background, my ethnic background is Polish. If there was a Polish guy being an yeah. asshole, it's not like I'm automatically going to be you know on his side. You know, so it's kind of a stupid. Yeah, thing Yeah, that's to do it. Well. You know, uh, the way I look at it, I don't I don't care what color your skin is. If you're driving crazy about to wreck and kill people, then you definitely don't need to be driving. So did he end up getting uh, arrested by the police then? Yeah, yeah, they took him to jail that day. Uh, I never heard from him again or heard anything about it ever again, but I'm sure he at least spent the night in the drunk tank. <laughs> well, what was funny too is he was saying that he was going to beat you up, and then, what, two minutes later in the video, it's, it looked like he was actually crying. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was pretty funny, man. Uh, I, it, you don't see that you don't get to see the whole video, but... At one point in the video, he was like, man, this cracker's going to have me on, on an iPod, man. It was, it was funny as hell. <laughs> so interesting, interesting stuff. So, uh, you know, now more specifically to your career, because we're, we're here promoting a fight for you before we talk about your upcoming fight. Uh, you know, I, I had mentioned this to somebody, uh, a guest we'd had a few shows ago because they also had uh, jumped between MMA and bare knuckles. So, and I also talked to my kickboxing coach this week. Uh, is there any disadvantage or uh, in, in taking both MMA and bare knuckle fights, or do you think there's advantages to doing so? Uh, I'll give you the background. My coach said that he couldn't imagine doing both at the same time because uh, it, it's just two different sports, but there's plenty of people doing it. 
Uh, you know, the the main thing is is you kind of kind of got to shut off, you know, your MMA brain whenever it's time for the bare knuckle fights. Um, that that's kind of what I did. Uh, whenever I decided to do, to do bare knuckle, I, I focused solely on boxing, and you know, work my ass off, get my boxing skills better, and. Um, you know, I just I just here recently decided that I was going to make my run back to the UFC, and the main reason being for that, uh, bare knuckle man, it's hell on your hands. You know, I didn't I didn't break my hands either time, but they swole up like three times the size of what they were supposed to be, and it, it just took them a long time to heal. And uh, you know, as far as the the, I mean. As far as MMA goes, like uh, switching back and forth, I really think that you could do both if you wanted to, but you would have to you would have to stay more MMA based than you know, the bare knuckle based. Uh, yeah, you, know, you couldn't just abandon your your kicks and stuff for one fight. Like as far as the sparring and stuff goes, you would still have to keep up with that. But uh, yeah, I don't really believe it's that hard to. To train MMA and then go fight a bare knuckle fight, I think that you know you're you're gonna know the rule set when you go in there. You're not gonna accidentally kick somebody or knee somebody. So as long as you keep doing that in your training, and you go out there and fight with just the hands, I think it'd be fine. Yeah, that's always kind of a question I had in training for bare knuckle. I mean, when you're sparring, do you wear MMA gloves or do you do you, you know simulate it as you would with bare knuckle? How does that work? Uh, no, whenever we were sparring and stuff, I strictly wore boxing gloves. But, uh, you know, got, as we got closer to the fight, I started hitting pads, you know, either MMA gloves or bare knuckles or, you know, even hitting the bags. I would hit MMA gloves and bare knuckles just to kind of get that range down because with the boxing glove, you have, you know, with, with the padding and all, it's probably another four to six inches worth of reach. And, uh, you know, you wanna you wanna get that that timing and and the the perfect uh, range down with just your bare hand. Right. And uh, that, I believe that'd be the only difference. Well, the other thing I was thinking too is blocking. It's a lot easier to block punches with yeah, boxing yeah. boxing mitts than having nothing on. So I didn't really think about that, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I never I never did any kind of blocking without you know without the actual gloves. You just kind of got to wing it when you get in there, kind of get used to it as you go. For sure, for sure. Now, before we get into your upcoming fight, you know, um, some of your more recent uh, staying with the bare knuckle, uh, where, where your two bouts with Artem Lobov, both fights were outstanding. Um, so, uh, obviously, you know, you won the last encounter, and again, it was it was bloody, it was exciting. Uh, can you talk about the difference between the two fights you had with Lobov and then comment on your most recent one, what was different uh, from the, the first time you took him on? Uh, you know, skill-wise, I, I don't think I made very many adjustments as far as, like, training camp. Um, you know, both times I was just as prepared but in the first fight, I, I don't know why, I don't know what happened, but uh, the very first punch he threw, all of my skill went out the windows. It was like I went back to, to high school or something. I just wanted to show him that I was tougher than he was. I wanted to hit him more than he hit me. And, you know, I wanted to prove to the world and him that I could take more than he could. And, uh, you know, I just threw all the skill away and fought like a madman. And the second fight, you know, I did pretty much the same exact thing, you know, as far as training camp goes, trained all the same stuff. But whenever it came down to fight time, I had it in my head that I was not going to leave, you know, cut up and beat up like I did the first time. I, I made sure that I went out there and I stuck to the game plan. I, I moved. I kept my hands up. I, you know, I hit my angles and stuff like I was supposed to. And I barely got to touch the whole fight. So, you know, really, more or less, more than anything, it was kind of the mindset had changed for the fight. You know, I, I didn't want to show him that I was tougher than he was. I wanted to show him that I was better than he was, you know. Sure, sure. And then, you know, obviously we don't want to know, you know, we, we don't want to get into financials and stuff because, you know, that's 
personal and stuff. But, um, you know, Paige Van Zandt just fought for Bare Knuckle the other day, and she said she was making four times than what she made in the UFC. Uh, is, you know, Bare Knuckle FC, is that a good way to get a payday? Is, is it, are the checks comparable to the UFCs? Uh, you know, I believe it, the bigger your name is, the bigger your paycheck is going to be. It doesn't really matter what organization you're in. Um, I think Paige Van Zant. I think she got that big, huge contract strictly because she was going to bring a, a whole new set of viewers to Bare Knuckle. Um, do I think they're going to keep paying her that way? No, I, I don't believe there's any kind of way that they can. Uh, right now, I like. Don't get me wrong. I love bare knuckle. I love fighting bare knuckle. It's a lot of fun. But as of right now, it's it's nowhere near competing. You know, UFC wise, I, maybe the money. But uh, as far as like the talent skill, you know, in BKFC, you've got three or four good guys in each division, and, and you go to the UFC and say there's probably, just say the 145-pound division. I Honestly, I have no clue how many people are in that division, but there's probably 100 or better. And every single one of them that you fight are straight down who had to work their asses off to get to that level. Well, the BKFC, you just, you know, they're signing guys that have one or two pro fights and even some that have no pro fights. And... You know, they're just trying to build their name up. Right now, they're, they're so lower level, you know, competition that they're not even competing. For sure, for sure. Now, uh, obviously you said that the focus right now is going to be on MMA. Makes a lot of sense. Your next fight coming up here uh, at Icon Fighting Federation, which uh, is a new up-and-coming promotion, which has uh, actually been pretty attractive since its first show. It's on UFC Fight Pass, so that's also a good way to get the boss's attention. So uh, why don't you kind of just uh, comment on how this fight ga came together? You know, you're taking on uh, Christopher Ramirez in the main event. Uh, so why don't you comment on him as a an opponent as well and, and you know we don't need the game plan obviously because you don't want to give that away but um how do you see this going uh man honestly uh i, I talked to dean tool about it i i've seen dean tool was the uh the promoter for icon and i seen you know they had a couple shows and they were already on ufc fight pass and i, I went to him about it i was like hey man i'm thinking about getting back in mma uh when would you Think about how, when would you have your next card, you know, close to the house. I he said we're gonna do March fifth in Biloxi. If you want on the card, you're on the card. I said awesome. Uh, I told him that'd be great. Well, they come out there with Christopher Ramirez, and he he's a guy from Mexico, and for some reason he had he had some kind of difficulties that he had to get something straightened out or whatever to be able to get into the country or something like that. So now I'm actually fighting a guy named Tarine Bogus or Bogus. Okay. I'm not exactly sure. Oh, yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah, he, uh, he's out of Iowa, I believe. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'll be fighting him now instead. And I've, I've watched one or two of his fights. And uh, honestly, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to, to take him lightly or anything like that. But I, I don't see a whole lot of, you know, things that I have to worry about so I'm, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna fight a full complete fight fight as smart as I can standing up as smart as I can on the ground and see where it goes I'm, I'm not gonna come in with any kind of specific game plan just gonna go out there and go with the flow and make sure I get my hand raised at the end of the day I, I the plan is to, to beat him every second of every round and, you know, afterwards, see if Sean Shelby wants to give me a call. Absolutely. Now, realistically, you know, and obviously with the current situation, there's a lot of late notice fights, you know, with guys testing positive or travel restrictions like you were, you were mentioning for the other fighter you were supposed to fight. Uh, realistically, how many wins do you think it takes to get you back to the UFC you know, obviously, it, it, you know, you can say one or two or whatever. But what do you think the exact number is or range of number there? Um, I believe, you know, at the worst, I need to get, you know, two to three wins in a row. Um, I, I do think that, you know, possibly, 
they could call me after this fight because I I'm gonna be main event on UFC Fight Pass, and I plan on going out here and showing them everything that I didn't do while I was in the UFC. You know, they they want to see me wrestle. Uh, if I if he tries to take me down, I plan on stopping every takedown. If he doesn't try to take me down, I'm going to take him down, you know, just to show them that I can wrestle and my wrestling has improved. And, you know, maybe maybe I'm lucky enough that they see what they wanted to see from me and get me right back in there. Uh, if not, you know, that's fine. I'm going to turn around. You know, if, if I don't take any injuries, I'm going to turn around book another fight almost automatically so that way I can get in at least two or three this year. And, you know, my my ultimate goal is by the end of 2021, be back in the UFC and, you know, back on track. Yeah, and I'm sure that's something that a lot of fans would welcome. I know that uh, you had a cult following in the UFC. You uh, you had, a you know, the personality and, and the fight style, quite frankly, uh, that, that got fan base. Now, I, this, I was just thinking of this while you were talking. Was it you or was it the other? Uh, God, who was it? that They were like the, the hillbilly Diaz brother. Was that you? Yeah, they called me Hick Diaz. Um, yes. I, I fought Jim Allers in my second UFC fight. Right. And I'm not 100% sure what he did before the fight or what he said, but he, he was in some interview before the fight, and he said something that just got under my skin. And uh, he was talking about how he's going to take me down and finish me on the ground, get back to you know what got him to the UFC, you know, something along those lines. And I remember during the fight, you know, he he was kind of not necessarily running from me, but he was he was backing away, trying to to get away from some of the attacks that I, I was throwing at him. So the more he backed away, the more I screamed at him. And then uh, I scream at him, telling him to get that takedown. I know that's what you want, you know, stuff like that. Just I uh, I was mad during the fight, so I, I just kept screaming at him. And then after that, you know, I got the name Kick Diaz. And uh, people think like a lot of people thought that that was something I was gonna do every fight, <laughs> and I honestly I don't even know where it came from. I was just I was mad, and I wanted to to make him pay for making me mad, you know. Yeah, I mean that's a natural reaction. I think everyone's kind of had that in, in competition, whether it's combat or just you know playing a game of pickup basketball or football or whatever. So totally natural reaction. So. Um, now let's, uh, we'll talk about one more thing here and then we'll, uh, we'll sign off for the night. Uh, we have the, uh, you know, we tape these shows a week in advance. Uh, we have an upcoming UFC fight night card at the UFC apex in Las Vegas. We generally only talk about the main event here. So let's take a quick look at the main event. We'll ask you for your opinion on that fight. And if you have a prediction, uh, this will be a heavyweight main event. Uh, this will be live on ESPN plus, uh, we have Curtis blades taking on Derek Lewis, you know, Derek Lewis, obviously a huge fan favorite because of his personal and obviously his knockout power uh, blades top five guy good wrestler so uh, Jason in looking at this blades versus Lewis fight I don't know if you you know some fighters come on this show and don't know a whole lot about other fighters but uh, if you have a breakdown and a prediction of this fight I'd love to hear it oh te like technically wise I can't tell you exactly who I think is gonna win um, they're, they're both decent guys uh, I I just know I love watching Derek Lewis. He he's a knockout artist. That's that's what I want to see. I I would like to, you know, I would like to see it be a good fight, a full fight. But uh, at the end of the day, I just want Derek Lewis to put him to sleep because he always, man. I've seen him several times. Almost every time that he's got a knockout, like he would he would be in a bad position for a while. Or, you know, he would be technically losing the fight, and then, bam, he shuts the guy's lights off, and that made me a huge fan. So that's what I hope to see. And, yeah. You know, no, no disrespect to Curtis Blades or anything, but I, I would love to see him get put to sleep. Absolutely, and for our fans in Illinois, Curtis Blades actually went to junior college at Harper, which is pretty much right down the road from my my uh, my house here. Um, but you know, let's, we'll take a quick breakdown of the fight. Derek Lewis is on a three fight winning streak. Actually, only one knockout in those three wins, uh, which is surprising because most of his fights before that have been by knockout. So uh, most recently knocked out Alexi Olenek uh, back in August. So we have that. He has struggled against wrestlers, so it will be interesting to see. 
uh, you know, if he can continue to improve his wrestling, because it, it certainly has improved. Now, with Curtis Blades, you have a guy on a four-fight winning streak with two knockouts, coming off a win over Alexander Volkov, who we just saw last weekend um, knocked out Alistair Overeem. So, uh, you know, Blades, uh, obviously a top-five guy. Uh, I, like you, would love to see Derek Lewis win here. Huge fan of Derek Lewis, but I think Curtis Blades' wrestling is a little too much, and he's a little hard to get off when he's on top, and he's got a pretty good ground and pound as well. So uh, I will take Blades, but I'm hoping for a Derek Lewis victory. Uh, so, Jason, thank you again for coming on the show. Uh, this is the time in the show where I will give you the floor. You can whore yourself out. Uh, where can we find you? Anybody you'd like to thank, the floor is yours. Come on, this way. Uh, you know, check me out on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, Twitter is J uh, at Jason the Kid. No, I'm sorry. Yes, at Jason the Kid 23 on Twitter. Uh, Instagram, at JTK the Kid. Uh, on Facebook, I've got two pages, Jason Knight and then Jason the Kid Knight is my fan page. Check me out on there. Uh, big thanks to my sponsors. Uh, let's see, Veteran Farms, s &B Welding. Uh, I've got a bunch. Um, uh, anyways. <laughs> if you sponsored me, thank you. I don't have a list in front of me, so I apologize. I'll make sure the next podcast we got a list in front of me, but I got the I got the main ones. Uh, thank y'all so much for everything. I appreciate it. Uh, you made the fight camp, you know, stress free. So we only got a couple more weeks, and we'll go out here and put on a show for you. Absolutely. And what is the date again on that Icon Fight Federation? March the 5th, Icon Fight Federation 5. It will be live on UFC Fight Pass. Uh, and if, if you can make it in person, if not, please make sure you watch on Fight Pass. I promise you, I will not disappoint. Absolutely, fans, and I will second that. A Jason Knight fight is generally not disappointing. So check that out on UFC Fight Pass. Guys, I'm not even going to plug myself. You know where to find my shit. Facebook, Twitter, Posted on Combat Press, Loudmouth MMA Podcast Network, the whole deal, MMA Intel. Uh, so, and that's it. So, uh, Jason, thank you again for coming on. So, for Jason Knight, I'm Riley Contact saying continue watching the fights, continue watching the show, and go fuck yourselves. Good night.